Welcome back to LearnPiezo.org. In today's lesson, uh, we're continuing. We have finally got off programming, which was the last programming, which was the last uh, lecture. We went over several different steps in order to uh, program essentially the impedance response or the frequency response of the transducer. That is the impedance versus frequency. So now we've made that uh, characterization device and we're going to move on toward assembly of the ultrasonic transducer. Ultrasonic cleaner. And we're going to need a couple of things here. Uh, you Obviously you have your transducer. Uh, the second thing you need is some type of metal container. A lot of times you can use a pot for this or something else. Metal container. And then something else to support um, your setup. Uh, you don't want your transducer laying on the floor. I'll, I'll basically, I'll show you the, the general uh, setup. And actually, let me just, uh, before I do that, I will uh, just describe what the ultrasonic cleaner looks like. Uh, we have our metal container here. Let's say it's like a bowl or a pan or a pot or something like that. And uh, probably want it to be more along the lines of this. This is what we're going to be making. So this is some type of metal cup, metal pot. And then we have our ultrasonic transducer on, on below it. So it looks like that. And then we have two piezos here. Which are in the middle. And then we have a back end mass and we have maybe a little screw popping out there. We have a electrode coming out here. Well, that's in black. You probably can't see black on black. Okay, and you have an electrode going here. So this is basically what it looks like. And you would then need something else to support it. So you may have some type of support mechanism on this, which, which leads down to the casing. So you would have this, all this apparatus inside of some type of casing, which would be supporting this whole, whole setup from the container. Uh, usually in actual uh, ultrasonic cleaners, you have a sort of mesh, you sort of another like a mesh container. So it's like a mesh uh, type of uh, insert. And then in that insert, you then put your, uh, your beaker as in the case of laboratory use, you put, put a beaker which has some type of solution inside of it and then which has maybe a part that you wanted to clean. Let's say you had like a screw. Okay, if it was in black that would be helpful. You had some type of screw that you were on clean and just this is sending ultrasonic waves through other solutions inside of this and it goes through this mesh and into the beaker and you can just, when you're done with it, you can just take the beaker out. So this is the basic uh, setup here. You may have received with your ultrasonic cleaner something like a little, a little, this is a really big, but something that is like a little screw which was found inside the top part of the, uh, the transducer. And that is in case that you want to weld this to the bottom of your metal container, you can screw on your transducer. But in this case, I sim and that would be useful if you wanted to change your transducer after some time. Because the, they won't last forever. But... In this case, uh, we're just going to use epoxy. So I want to bring your attention to this figure here. Uh, I'm going to be using, you know, our transducer, and we have already we should solder wires to it already. The middle part you solder a red wire. The back, the middle electrode you solder a red wire. The other electrode you solder a black wire. This is very important because. Uh, the black wire is attached to ground through this screw and this metal top part. It goes through and it attaches to ground through this base and then through the cup. So you can remain electrically safe if you attach the ground to that side and not the um, live wire. You see I have a couple of weights here and those are very important because we're using Gorilla Glue Epoxy. We put it, you know, between. Let me just erase some of this, all this gunk well going on. Um... We put this, we mix up the epoxy. Uh, I think I have the Gorilla Glue 5-minute uh, clear epoxy. 
and um, so you put that, it should, you know, it advertises it, it can attach anything to anything. Now there's like metal to metal, which would probably be better now that I think about it, because we have a metal transducer attachment, a metal can. I also took a lot of care and I cleaned, uh, I first, sorry, I took this metal, this, this is not metal can, this is a paint can. So we're using a paint can. And this can be found, uh, you know, clean paint cans can be found in your hardware store. I believe this is a, like a quart size or it's a smaller size. And you can sort of see from the, the scale that it's, uh, you know, small, not the regular large paint cans. Um, so basically what we did, we took this paint can, I used sandpaper, not a very rough sandpaper, a decently rough sandpaper, and I eroded the uh, top part or the back part of the paint can where the transducer is going to lay, just so it can make a nice uh, surface for the epoxy to adhere to. I then cleaned that area with uh, lens wipes, or you could use any type of rubbing alcohol to get all that little tiny particles out of there so then the epoxy can adhere properly to your. Um, to your paint can or your container. Um, so then what we did, I mixed the epoxy. Um, the box comes with a little area to mix epoxy with. I applied the epoxy uh, to the paint can in a specified area where I, where I dotted in blue uh, with the dry erase marker. Uh, I spread the epoxy out over there. I didn't attach any of the epoxy to the transducer to begin with. Uh, then I put the transducer on. It was sort of sliding and shaking around a little bit as you have to hold it in place. Remember, this is 5 in epoxy. And then I put all these weights, which are nicely concentric, and I can just put the weights all on top of there nicely. I held that transducer in place, make sure it didn't shift around because the epoxy is sort of very viscous and it can allow that transducer to shift, and you don't want that because then you won't get your transducer where you put it. So you hold that until it stays still, and then you let it go. You have to wait 24 hours in, in order for it to fully cure. To make sure and then you have something that looks like that you have a transducer and you have all this junk in the background but you have the transducer and you have it nicely epoxied and this weight that was left on the top of the here overnight next we have to make the container which is going to support this paint can and for this I chose a box or a uh, a container of yogurt a large container actually uh, probably like, I don't know, it's not a gallon, but it's sort of big. Um, you can use any type of plastic container or anything you can think of. Uh, I basically chopped the top part off, I drilled a couple of holes, and I ripped it apart, and I tear it apart, which is sort of brute. Uh, then I drilled a hole from one side to one side, more toward one side. So I have the zip tie, which is going across these two holes, which are not, par which are not concentric with the middle which are not opposite, so they're sort of more toward one side. So if you have your circle, the top, I drill the hole here and here, then I put the zip tie through there. What are we going to do with the zip tie? And here's another picture of it. Uh, okay, then I put the transducer inside, and as you can see sort of from what I sh sh showed here, I tied the zip tie, and by tying it, it squeezes on the... Um, Trans it squeezes on the top of the paint can. So I was able to squeeze that if you see this like nook coming out of here. That's due to the um, zip tie and I just sort of slid this paint can inside of there and now the transducer is floating as you wanted so we have, probably have, you have, you'll have the transducer underneath here. And then you have these two wires which I drilled holes and they all to come out and then there's, there's that and there's the paint can here. And it's all supported in this housing, so it's sort of isolated um, from the outside. And again, so that's how I assembled uh, this um, whole apparatus. Now here's the original uh, transducer here, our original setup. Now we have nice leads which, which we can work with. Uh, this black lead and this red lead, which the black is electric connected, electrically connected to the paint can. But the red, which will be the varying voltage, is um, free to be subjected to 40 kilohertz range ultrasonic energy. Okay, that brings us to the end of this lecture. Um, in the next part of the lecture, I'm going to describe, or the project, I'm going to describe low power testing. 
you know, the last lecture, we developed different programming tools to characterize the transducer. And now we're going to characterize the transducer in three ways. The first is free by itself, like we already like we've all already done. The next is now it's attached to the paint can. So attached. Or I'm going to call this unloaded for good purposes. And then after attaching it, I'm going to put in 500 milliliters of water. And that is going to uh, that is going to load the situation. So I'm, we're going to determine different things and analyze it according to its impedance versus frequency. I'll see you in the next lecture for that discussion.